Over the years, Minecraft has seen some amazing texture packs come and go. There's still a large community for tweaking the game's textures and models and pushing graphics to their absolute limit. However, as with everything in Minecraft, there have been some famous texture packs that everyone was using and talking about back in the day that have either faded from the spotlight or been discontinued entirely. So today, let's take a trip down texture pack memory lane and visit some of those eras and talk about the history and stories of each one. Hopefully you find a few you either used or remember and learn something new from the video. First up is Painterly Pack. Painterly is one of the oldest texture packs in all of Minecraft, being released in Minecraft's alpha version in late 2010. It was a 16x16 16 16 native resolution pack, and as the name suggests, its main shtick is smoothing out a lot of Minecraft's rough and gritty textures. Kind of like, well, a painting. Now the textures are nice, yes, but what sets this particular pack apart, and why it has well over 20 million downloads in history, is because of the customizable pack feature. You see, the full library contained over 5,000 individual textures, and on their old website, you could create a pack fully tailored to your liking using the tool. This led to a lot of quote-unquote additions being made, with the most famous you might remember being the Yogg Box pack. It's funny, in 2011, Baby Ryan made a video covering the Yogg Box pack, and here I am 12 years later talking about it again. Now, Painterly was discontinued somewhere around version 1.12. There was a lot of drama with a large customization library with some other creators claiming the Painterly owner, Rodox, stole their textures and claimed it as his own. Whether or not this was true, Rodox was very vocal with his frustration of these allegations, denied any copyright issues incessantly, and I'm sure these feelings, along with the ever busyness of life, ultimately led to him quitting entirely. Something interesting is that the old website, painterlypack.net, has been purchased by some random blog called Pack in Peterly. They really should check their spelling. There are tons of snapshots of the old website on the Wayback Machine though, and it's really fun to explore the old pages. And lastly, there's a fan-made continuation of Painterly that, as far as I know, is still being actively updated at the time of this video's release. Next on the list is Jollycraft. Jollycraft falls into the list of still exists, but isn't popular as it once was, and you likely haven't heard of it in a long time. It was last updated for Minecraft 1.19, and according to Andre Jolicor, the creator, 1.20 is currently in the works as we speak. It was originally released in early 2011 for beta 1.2, so it's crazy that it's been actively updated by the same person for 12 years. It's another 16x16 16 16 texture pack, though it looked amazing for the time back then. The Jollycraft torches are probably my favorite torch retexture ever made. It just looks so nice. Jollycraft took off almost immediately, being covered and used by some of Minecraft's biggest creators of the time. Fun fact about me, it was the first and only texture pack I ever actively used in Minecraft as I've always preferred the default textures combined with some nice looking shaders. I used it for probably two or three years in the early days of the game though. It gave Minecraft an entirely different feel, slightly fantastical and whimsical which was pretty different from the other big packs at the time that leaned toward realism and smoothing out the textures. The creator is a super welcoming and friendly guy and it shows in the Jollycraft website and forum post to this day. So if you've used Jollycraft before or have never heard of it and are looking for a new texture pack to try out, definitely check it all out. Possibly the most famous one on this list, next up is BD Craft, specifically the Sfax Pure BD Craft version, which was the original pack released under the BD Craft umbrella all the way back in January 2011. Now let me be clear before you angrily comment that the video is clickbait. This one is definitely not forgotten or out of the spotlight. Many, many people still use it in this day and age. But I asked in a community post a while ago about what the most nostalgic texture packs are, and this one came up a lot. Sfax is a comic book styled pack that changes every block in the game pretty dramatically. Now, in case you didn't know, the Sfax BD Craft pack was used extensively by huge creators at the time, such as Chimney Swift 11 in his Minecraft Files series and the original Yogg's Cast group featuring Lewis and Simon. This, combined with its fantastic art style and design, led to the pack blowing up immensely across the Minecraft beta community. Everyone and their mother knew the word Sfax. 
Nowadays, BD Craft is literally its own company, having tons of individual packs to try and even being featured on the Bedrock Marketplace and now working on assets and programs for other games. There's so much I could cover on BD Craft alone as it's a wild story of success, but to sum it up in the scope of this video, I will just say that it's kind of crazy what a bit of luck combined with a bit of marketing will bring you eventually. Another one you probably do remember or maybe know but don't remember what it was called is OCD Disco. OCD Disco was made famous because of the classic Temple of Notch video by FV Disco, featuring the pack that the creator also made. It has very thick, straight lines and pretty much makes Minecraft look like a grid while still maintaining the color schemes of the blocks. It honestly looks really cool and was a very unique take on texture packs of the time. What's cool is that in the time of the Temple of Notch video and FV Disco's other early Redstone showcase videos, the texture pack was his own personal one and wasn't available to the public. However, so many people loved it and asked for it, he ended up releasing it in August 2011 on Planet Minecraft and the popularity of his YouTube content quickly translated to this new texture pack. Unfortunately, FV Disco stopped posting videos a decade ago and stopped updating the OCD pack in Minecraft version 1.8. However, like most packs that stopped being updated, this project was also picked up by a guy named Antonio Sofron, pointing the name Sofron pack that features the exact same style right where the original OCD disco pack left off. The awesome thing is, it's already available and released for 1.20, so if you want to relive some old nostalgia in the modern game, definitely check it out. Getting into the more realistic side of texture packs, next up on the list is LB Photo Realism. And when I say realism, I mean that Scuttles, the texture pack creator, pushed things to the absolute limit with this one. It started out as a full-scale mod pack for the game, aiming to make Minecraft as realistic feeling as physically possible, and eventually was released as a standalone texture pack in early 2011. This pack, to me, looks like what would have happened if Minecraft was made in Unity. Like, it literally looks like a Minecraft spin-off made using the Unity engine. The original LB photorealism didn't last very long compared to the other packs on this list, only surviving a couple years before being discontinued. Still, it is absolutely one of the pioneers of extreme realism for Minecraft, predating the crazy high-resolution things we have today like RTX by a literal decade. Nowadays, it'll run decently on most hardware, but back then, you had to have a supercomputer of a PC to run it with zero lag. Kind of crazy that Minecraft had only been around for a little over a year at the time, and people were already pushing the game as far as they possibly could. Now, of course, there is a continuation of the pack called LB Photorealism Reload, and it looks insanely beautiful, so absolutely check it out and give it some support. Hey, we're officially halfway through the video, and I want to quickly thank all of my channel members listed here on these signs. Special shout out to my knights, Crimson, Ponytail MC, and Caspero, and my beloved lords, Really Real, VI, and Dirty Dan. If you'd like to see your name on the sign wall, check out the join button below for that and some other awesome perks, like priority sign up for all future event and members only Discord stuff, and some custom Ryan emojis. Thanks so much for the support, let's get back into the video. The next one really hits home for a lot of people's nostalgia. One that didn't last very long at all, but you've probably seen or remember. This is DokuCraft. DokuCraft was perhaps the most popular beta 1.7 texture pack ever made. Now, you may remember it being featured on the absolutely legendary YouTube series The Minecraft Project by Syndicate, which helped get it out there. Another reason it got so popular is that it was one of the only beta texture packs which featured full support for the Aether mod which at the time of beta 1.7 was arguably the most popular mod out there. Sadly, like a fleeting romance in a Hallmark movie, DokuCraft blessed us with its presence and immediately dropped off the face of the earth, never being updated again by the original creator, which is an old heartbreak many of us probably still feel deep down. However, and you can see where I'm already going with this, of course there has been a community continuation of DokuCraft after the creator released the pack's assets for free, once deciding not to continue. This is called DokuCraft, the saga continues, and it has an amazing community around it, 
plus a pretty snazzy website. When I was doing research on all of these discontinued packs, it never failed to put a smile on my face to see so many passionate people continuing the work of amazing original creators. Next up, and another pretty short-lived pack, is Ovo's Rustic. Well, as the name suggests, Ovo's Rustic gave Minecraft a rustic feel with the textures, while preserving the overall vanilla Minecraft theme, which when combined with some rustic style builds led to some pretty amazing results. It was a pretty high resolution pack for the time, 64 by 64, and was released in May 2011 and it officially lasted just over a year, being discontinued by the original creator in 2012. This led to the exact situation of DokuCraft, the original creator handing off the assets to a team of people continuing the project. In the case of Ovo's Rustic, this became Ovo's Redemption, and it has an active CurseForge page and Discord server. It's yet another beautiful example on this list of a lost project being picked up by people dedicated to preserving the legacy. Next up on the list is the classic John Smith pack. Probably the most popular medieval RPG style texture pack of the early days, John Smith was, well, made by creator John Smith. It was made for early beta and lasted all the way up until release version 1.2.1. Due to its RPG elements, it was extremely popular for adventure map videos, with many creators such as Rendog and Monkey Farm rocking the textures in their videos. Hey Ryan, does John Smith have a fan-made continuation like every other fucking pack on this list? Yes, dear child, of course it does. Like other creators, the original John Smith got burnt out after a couple of years. But there is a community called John Smith Legacy, who are preserving the legacy, so to speak. However, the OG John Smith will go down as one of the most famous old texture packs of all time. If you're still watching this far, you're in for a treat. The last few had pretty straightforward and similar stories, but this one's story is filled with drama and tainted by blunders. One you may have heard of from Ant Venom before because honestly the full story definitely deserves a full video dedicated to it. But let's summarize briefly and talk about the original Faithful pack and its wild history. The OG Faithful pack was originally made for the earliest versions of Minecraft, all the way back in 2010. It was created by a dude named Vatic and continued for six long years until Vatic vanished off the internet, leaving the texture pack and everything else behind. Soon after this happened, the texture pack's original files were picked up by a guy named Kraneff. Kraneff seemed harmless at first, dedicated to continuing a project loved by millions of people. I mean, Faithful was literally Minecraft's top texture pack for a very, very long time. However, things took a turn for the worst when all of a sudden Faithful appeared for purchase on the Bedrock Marketplace. This was… odd. Kraneff had not consulted with anyone before making this decision and when asked about it, he insisted that Vatic gave him full permission to distribute the texture pack this way. Well, spoiler alert, this was massively untrue, and it turned out that Kraneff took advantage of the fact that Vatic was gone and looked to profit off something that he didn't create or have the rights to. And these shenanigans lasted way too long. Four years until another texture pack team, the Compliance Project, who by the way Kraneff was also involved in, completely took over the Faithful project. According to the website, this was due to a disagreement with Kraneff that led to them kicking him off the Compliance Project team, and subsequently being angry mobbed out of Faithful. Today, Faithful has been continued by the Compliance Project with full homage to Vatic and maintaining the original license as it was set up. It's kind of crazy, not even something as seemingly innocent as Minecraft texture packs are free from crazy drama. The last but not least story is the Infinite Texture Pack. This was created and showcased by a YouTuber named Finn back in 2015 for Minecraft 1.8. A big draw for the pack was that it was marketed for PvP players, which if you know anything about anything, 1.8 was the absolute peak for Minecraft PvP. This led to the pack becoming pretty much an overnight sensation, used by hundreds of thousands of people and putting Finn on the map. The Infinite pack saw a couple of changes over the next few months, featuring a Christmas-themed version and a really nice 3D-styled version as well. However, similar to DokuCraft, Finn never really touched the pack after that, which is sad because even the non-PVP-related textures look really nice. 
Like this looks like something I would have used for general survival back in the day, honestly. Finn slowly faded out of the Minecraft content sphere and after a brief stint with vlogging, hasn't been heard from in a couple years. Just another dude who grew up with us after influencing so many early Minecraft memories. One last thing I find super interesting that I wanted to bring up is the overall downward trend of texture packs in Minecraft in recent years. I think all of these packs that I've listed, as well as the other ones in existence, peaked from 2010 to 2014-ish, and at that point shaders became widely popular and sort of took over. Just look at the Google trend graph for texture packs versus shaders. They are essentially inverse, which is kind of crazy. Anyway though, let me know what you think in the comments below and if there's any other popular texture packs you remember or used. Remember, this isn't an exhaustive list, so if I missed any you can think of, it doesn't mean it's less deserving to be in this video. If you enjoyed this Minecraft list, let me know by leaving a like and subscribe if you're brand new for a potentially endless nostalgic Minecraft experience on my channel. I love you all so, so very much. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next one.